Hi, and welcome to Ken's Veg Patch. Um, last time we spoke, it was in August, and it was right at Harvest Festival time. Everything was abundant, everything was growing, and we're all eating salads and enjoying the nice hot summer. Uh, that was four weeks ago. Um, since then, it's taken a distinct autumnal turn, and. Um, Everything's gone very autumnal, in fact, I'm not really proud of the garden because everything seems to be brown and dying back and there's not much left to be done of this year, but there are certain tasks to be done. So uh, on this video, we're going to lift what's left of the onions and bunch them ready for storing and the shallots. And we're going to have a look what's under the ground with the potatoes because it's been a very difficult year. and Heaven knows what might have happened underneath. If you've been watching the news and the weather, all the farmers are going balmy because the crops are really diminished. So um, it could be a real embarrassment to me this if I dig in walnuts up instead of potatoes. So we'll have a look what's going on anyway. Um, we've four lots of potatoes for different functions because we love cookery. Um, we've got Mary Piper, which is a good one for chips and. I'll tell you what, come on, we'll go and have a look. Right, um, here we are. These are the shallots, or they were the shallots. These are the onions. Um, traditionally, I've grown two beds of onions for our needs, but this year I've grown one bed of onions and put a lot of new resources into shallots, which are all grown from seed. Normally, you grow shallots from bought in bulbs which split and you're producing vegetative, I think that's a word, whereas these have all been grown from seed. So this is a round shot, but I had to I open that, is it? Do I keep going? Yeah. Oh sorry right here. Yeah. So this is a round one which has been very successful but it was deteriorating in the beds with the wet with the wind and the rain so I've had to dig that up and bunch it but they're all dug ready for hanging up. This is the banana shallot, the one I mentioned on the last film. These are the ones that if you see Gordon Ramsay on the telly he's always using a banana shallot slicing and chopping. These are a lot better than normal onions because they've got a higher sugar content and when you're caramelising something before making a meal you get a much better end product with this. So they're the banana shallots and these are the onions. These are, we grow these, we grew these from sets this year. Normally I grow them from seed but these are from sets and it's a variety called store run or it's improved store run and what they've done with this they've it used to be a very flat onion but you've got more of a nice round tennis ball type of onion. Um, the complete crop, this is, we've got these and we did have red onions but they matured a lot earlier so they're already dried and um, in storage for winter. But at the end of this we'll have some stills and you can see what they look like. So that's if you read old fashioned gardening books, they always on about getting these huge two pound uh, exhibition winning size onions, but really that's plenty big enough for an average meal to be made. Lots and lots of onions that side are absolutely ideal. So this is what you'd aim for, lots and lots of those where you use them for a meal and there's not putting half an onion away in a fridge in cling film to rot in the back of a fridge. The shallots, that's one of the red shallots, and that's not ideal. Shallots to me should be these little, nice little, they're ideal, because with those we just peel them, they're good if you're using cock or van, you throw those in at the end, or we like to just put those in with the joints and caramelise and have them all. Um, the banana shallots, I'm very pleased with those, because they look just absolutely perfect. So that's what we're aiming for next year when we sell them. The other reason I need to get these up, is that I've got lots of spring cabbage and this will be the basis for our cabbage patch for next year. We've had a cabbage patch over there and it's just about burnt out now but that's kept us going. Uh, the spring cabbage will plant it closely 
and you'd use every other plant for green leafy veg and then it is a pointy variety so the others can heart up and we'll use those for coleslaw and cooked cabbage so they're going but they're waiting to go in fact they're getting a bit leggy but there is a trick I can show you with cabbage about those so all we need to do really now with the shorts and the onions if I can just come over there please Mr Cameraman my trusty knife and a piece of string just a piece of ordinary string there's lots of ways if you look at books there's lots of ways of storing onions you can make them into these beautiful ropes that you see traditional French onion sellers sell but there's a lot of work in that and you don't put them in the kitchen anyway because they just sprout and go with green stems so we just bunch them up another trick that you'll hear about is to put them in a pair of old tights because it lets the air go around and hang them up but I don't think it's the kind of thing you could hang up in your kitchen anyway so all we do now is just pull them out to the ground if we do leave them in the ground too long the roots start again and the onion starts regrowing and what happens then it will split and I don't know if you've had an onion out of storage you might have bought and there's two shoots and the onion comes apart and that's when it's been left in too long so they need to come out and stop growing so that's no good too many so all we do now just get perhaps 10 onions don't worry about the muck because these will still be hanging up next April so the muck's well off them by then just get them in a nice bunch eight or ten so we can have that taking great care not to drop them on the floor I'll do these at my leisure later on and you'll probably see the finished product at a later date that's probably enough if you do put too many in they get a bit unwieldy the bunches and they start dropping to bits and it becomes a problem so I can just pop that through there tight a bit tight simple slip knot and that's probably enough that another knot there I was hoping this would work because the last thing you want to do is to do it in front of the camera and the whole lot collapses on you and breaks your toe so that's perfectly sufficient just hang them up like that um, these will be hung up outside under a veranda uh, they don't mind the cold I'm like last year we had them hung up all through the beast from the east and there was no <coughs> problem so that's what we'll do with all of them so and this lot here will show you some still photos but that should keep us going quite nicely until uh, next April so now the biggest problem of the lot is the heart's doing about 3,000 revs a minute. We've got to see what's below the surface with the potatoes, whether it's a disaster and the hot summer's destroyed it all. It's going to work. So I think we'll start with the Mary Piper at this end. Mary Piper is one, um, I don't always grow it every year, but it's an excellent potato for chips and it's a good potato all the catering outlets use it for chips but you don't get very big potatoes and it's very prone to scab which if you don't know what scab is it's like a, a disease that it literally looks like a scab on the skin but you can rub it off and it doesn't deter you from eating the potato so there's no problem there so what we'll do we'll just that's another thing you can get into this that's meant this in the greenhouse to keep it going with mint throughout the year. If you want to put it in beautiful plant, you put it in the of potatoes or if my wife wants some mojito, I've got mint right through the year. So something else we can discuss at the end of the We've so much to discuss. Right, we'll see what happens with that. So this is Mary Piper's. There's 22 potatoes, seed potatoes in here at about 18 inch intervals. So just give it a go now, eh? I don't think there was a potato there, I must have gone to one side. When you're digging potatoes, one of the most important things is to dig the little ones as well. Don't leave anything like that, however small, 
because when we talk about crop rotation, I can't grow potatoes on this patch next year because they suffer from a thing called potato wheelworm. And if you regrow on the same piece of ground, uh, there's a chance of it building up and you won't be able to grow potatoes there anymore. So if we leave those potatoes in, I might have onions in here next year. And there's nothing worse than the onions, young seedlings growing nicely. And a dirty great big potato plant grows in the middle and spoils it. So you've got to dig every little one up out. So we'll see if we can find where there was a proper plant. have to produce some potatoes somewhere. No, there's not big nests of them, but um, they're not too badly scabbed anyway. Um, oh, they're, they're scabbed. I don't know if can you see that that scab, but that will scrape off to give us a potato underneath. Um, I don't think I've hit the real lots there, so if I can just come over there. There's one at the surface there, we'll see what this one's like. more like it yeah I've hit the real potato there so that's that's what I want for chips they're not bad um, I'll have to go through the whole bed with a fine tooth comb but I'm not going to be boring even those that size have got to be dope incidentally there's another little thing here these here are like tomatoes and you might have seen them growing on potatoes but potato is the same family as a tomato, so they are actually, strictly speaking, like a little tomato. Uh, they're not poisonous at all, but you wouldn't eat them, but there's nothing to worry about. Well, that's a sample of the um, Mary's Piper, so that's not too bad. And I say the scab, you can see the blemishes there, but there's not many holes in, so they're going to be all right, those. So we'll dig those later on. We'll just try some of these other ones over here, Mr. Cameron. Uh, this is Desiree, it's a red potato, it's a waxy potato. So if I'm making a tortilla, I always use uh, Desiree. And you hear lots of chefs on the telly saying um, um, waxy potatoes. So but these tend to be a bit bigger than the um, Mary Piper. So see if there was one here. Oh no, <laughs> so much from the labelling, that's not Mary Piper. No, it's not Desiree, that's. just shows how wrong you can get things, doesn't it, when you put the wrong label in, so that's a bad start, but anyway, we'll get some of those up. Right, so this wasn't the desire we desired. <coughs> I think this will be it for here, so we'll just... In fact, I think that was one that we had on holiday ones, and I brought about four or five back just to try it because it was a Cornish potato, and... Um, Luckily, and this is something I will mention at a later date, I always make a plan of the garden, so I do know on plan exactly what it is. I was just doing this from memory, but I might do a complete video about planning the garden because it is very important, the crop rotation and that, but we won't get too bogged down, so hopefully these should be red potatoes. You can feel the excitement building. No, these are no potatoes. Hello? There we go, yeah, red ones. That's the desire, eh? If I can just hold in on where the plant was. <laughs> I'm not a magician feels like on the television now, and he says, Tommy Cooper, there we are. Desire, nice potato. That's got a little bit of scab. But you always get a nice big potato of these. See if there's a, there should be a plant in the middle there, so. Oh, yeah. There we go. And like I said before, even that little jasper there needs to come out. Oh yeah, that was a full plant. So that's, that's the Desiree, the red, um, the red waxy one, we'll, we'll 
get too boring and spend all day. So we'll just have a quick look at the Estima. Uh, that's three varieties. Estima is a bread and butter potato. It's one, it always seems to succeed in any conditions and I've always grown that because if everything else fails, the Estima comes strong. Now I might wish I'd never said that now, but am I best at the back of the bed, Mr. Cameron? I know here. That's good. Right. We'll just see if we can locate. These are actually something else. Um, these are sugar bags which I've got from a rock factory. This is in Lancashire. There's plenty of rock made in Lancashire. Put two of these together and derive them from potato bags because when you store the potatoes, you don't put them in polythene or anything tin foil or anything like that because they just sweat and rot. They've got to be quite airy, but you must make sure there's no light coming into them. If a potato goes green, it's actually poisonous and it tastes diabolical. Um, so, uh, and the whole crop's ruined, so these are just, I don't know if you can pick them up, but that's what you do with the potatoes. Keep them dark and cool all through the year. And we've just got to try and locate this SD now. Ah, there we go. Now that's, that's a steamer. Can you get on that? Now that's had wire worms on it. You can see, you break the surface there. In fact, there's a little culprit. It's a slug. Can you see there? That's that's eating my tea, this little rascal. And that's slug damage. That's what you call a keel slug. And that, you'll cut round it, but you used to be able to get um, uh, insecticides with this, but uh, they're all banned now really for domestic use like this but it can be frustrating sometimes but um, a steamer seems to come through okay on there it, they don't get too many of it now look at that that's typical steamer nice big chunky potato but even that's got bits of scab i might have to worry about the use of manure next year don't forget the little jaspers And the other thing of course is this is a nice blunt fork you don't want to raise a sharp fork because there's nothing worse than growing potatoes all year than sticking your fork through it so you can't use them so we just have one little put around here and see what we can do see if we can find that where that plant was that was at the tail end of, him, of that plant there just have another dig at the side here Oh yeah, that's a typical last thing. They're good for baking or anything. That's not a blemish on that. Very few small ones, the new ones size. But so well that's it. I won't bore you anymore. So it looks like it's going to be a successful crop. Um, now what we'll do when I'm off film, I'll dig all these up. And if the weather keeps like this, you leave them out just for 24 hours and they dry and you can rub the soil off and then you bag them up. If you put them way too wet, the bags can get damp and you're on your way to the potatoes rotting. So when we've stopped filming and I've got to bed, I've had a cup of tea and my heart stopped beating because the crop looks okay. Um, I'll come back out and dig them up and then we'll get some still photos and we'll just try and give an idea what we've produced from these three beds. That's more or less it for this video. Um, I'm hoping to do one every month. So we've had August, we've had September. October is a key month in the year because October, I think, around the Mediterranean area, they plant their garlic. I think it's October the 25th. Um, so we always put ours in in October because uh, garlic wants a nice period of cool weather. It likes to come through the winter. And even though it's covered in snow, it's not, um, everybody thinks oh, it's a soft Mediterranean um, crop, but it thrives. It needs a cool period to make sure that the um, bulb matures. So the next one we do, we'll be planting the garlic. And the other thing you can do in October is put broad beans in. Now, if we put broad beans in in October, and I do this a special way, we should have broad beans on the kitchen table for next spring bank holiday or Whitsuntide as they used to call it. That was what you, a good gardener was supposed to do. I've just noticed out of the corner of my eye, I've stopped eating the um, runner beans now, which I'm letting them go to seed because these 
I might seed for next year. If you've never grown runner beans, I might. These could be the beans that the Jack and the Beanstalk gave a cow for. I, I'd give a cow for these. I think they're fantastic, really. But um, these are next year's seeds, so that's the broad beans, uh, the runner beans, which I'm letting go to seed. And this is my, it's, I think it's got, it's Haricot bean. I think it's French bean. But these are yes, black seeded variety. These are me, and unlike little kidney beans, these are a climbing bean. Because if you look at the size of this garden, I'm desperate for room and I can't expand sideways. So with the canes there, which I don't know if you can see, uh, we've took the garden upwards. So all through the year we had um, monge two peas and garden peas and beans on those. So that's extending the garden upwards. So that's next year's runner beans and next year's French beans, which I'll put them in my pockets and forget all about them, if wife will find them in the washer and kill me. Um, so next year, uh, next one we'll be talking about the garlic and the thing I need to um, stress is that the garlic last year I grew was over there on this bed. I can't grow garlic there this year or onions, I can't put the onions there because you cannot put onions, garlic, leeks, all the same family on the same soil because there's a nasty thing called white onion rot and if you do get that there's nothing you can do about it you just can't grow onions again and we don't want that so between now and the next film I'll start doing um, a plan and work out where the garlic can go it's got to be a sunny spot so it's probably going to be over there uh, where the potatoes were we're digging up but having said that potatoes are a gross feeder so to get some good healthy bulbs of garlic I'll have to dig the beds well and manure them and that's another thing that we'll have to talk about I'm going to make a full film of digging a bed and the correct way to dig it how to incorporate your manure in your trace elements and everything uh, and all that needs doing between now and the busy growing period of next February so that's it for me hope you've enjoyed it and um, look forward to speaking to you again next time thank you